Joe, they got really good pieces all over the field. Okay, that's the reason that they win. That's the reason that they won nine games last year. There's the reason that they did a lot of good things last year. They had they were the 22nd total defense last year. I know that Isaiah Foskey's gone, but Joe, you turn ret- ten returning starters that are seniors or grad transfer seniors on this defense. You know how I love. I personally love experience on defense. I even thought that, that Notre Dame was pretty decent on third down. Really, that shows that you're a really well coached team. The problem with Marcus Freeman and Notre Dame, even though they gave they had games where they gave up a lot of rushing yards. Marshall, I think they gave up 220 yards on the ground. Offensively, Sam Hartman might be the biggest addition in college sports from a value standpoint. I don't know who he's going to throw it to. I know that they have a pretty decent offensive line. I know that you have a good running back. The question is, what happens when uh, Isaiah, Fo- uh, not Isaiah Foskey, uh, Andre Estime, does he have someone that he that could spell for him? I know Devin Ford is now in this equation. Mm-hmm. But, Joe, I think that you when you lost pieces offensively, you got worse. I, I Listen, I don't mean this in a wrong way. Tommy Reeves goes to Alabama, okay? Then you hire from within from a guy the last time he called plays at West Virginia was the worst in the Big 12. And I'm supposed to come out here and say, oh, you got better because you added Sam Hartman? That guy is still calling the plays. I look at them as a 9-3 and three team. I think they're good enough to be 9-3. and three. The massive problem that I have is offensive play calling, going into another year, year two of Marcus Freeman, and I just don't think that you have the weapons to keep up with Ohio State. I don't think you have the weapons to keep up with Clemson, and I don't think that you have the weapons to keep up with USC. So when I look at this in a vacuum, they're going to go 9-3. and three. Their schedule dictates that for them that they're going to go 9-3. and three. I don't think it's a hot take that they're going to go 9-3. and three. The It's not. Problem, it, it's not. No. And I think that's pretty fair because, Joe, if I would have said any other team in the country that you are hiring from within with an offensive coordinator that has the history as this guy, you would say that that's a massive red flag. You, would, you know you would say it is. And it's a massive red flag for Notre Dame. I think that Marcus Freeman is one of the rising stars in college football. Doesn't matter if your offense is going to be just as bad as they were at times a year ago. It's where I sit with Notre Dame. You're going to have to show me that you can beat Joe. It's like everybody else in the country besides which last thing besides it doesn't feel like it happens for Notre Dame. Every team in the country has to prove that they can do it. Brian Kelly, Alabama, Lincoln Mm -hmm. Riley having 10 wins out West and not being in Oklahoma, rebuilding a brand, so on and so forth. We get on the Steve Sarkeesian. We get on to Brent Venables. Why aren't we having the same conversations about Notre Dame and where they lack offensively? That is my ultimate question and the question mark that I have for them moving forward. I think what you said there is pretty reasonable. I push back on – some of the comments that you're making on their offense. So here's here's my whole my whole thought here. Okay. Last year defensively, not consistent for all 13 games, but still overall were suffocating on defense. Extremely suffocating on defense. They were one of the most dominant defenses in the country. I point at performances like the way that they played against South Carolina. Boston College, they completely took them off the board. We had a guy like Benjamin Morrison, who was a freshman last year, completely burst onto the scene as one of the best defensive backs in the country this upcoming season. And also, the way that they played against Clemson, I know that that was DJU who was at quarterback. They dominated them all over the field and completely, completely eliminated their offense from that game. They could not move the ball. And they didn't really lose that much production. They didn't lose that many guys. Isaiah Foskey is the most important player that they lost. They return with a bunch of young, talented players that are going to continue to improve the quality of this defense. A guy like Jordan Patelho is, I believe, somebody who's going to be on the national radar 
after this season because he's a really talented defensive lineman. Where I push back, though, I think that I'm not worried about what their defense is going to do. Marcus Freeman's a defensive-minded coach. He has been fantastic as the defensive coordinator, now as the head coach. I understand the concerns with the lack of weapons and the lack of receivers that this offense has. It's not like we've got some sleeper guy that was explosive in a couple of games that we can maybe point to and say, this guy's coming up next because that, that body's just not there. It's just not Michael Mayer is now gone, but with the inept play calling from Tommy Rees and the horrendous quarterback play that we had last year, that is what held them back in key games. That's what held them back against Marshall. That's what held them back against Stanford. That is what prevented them from winning those games and having a better record last year. That's gone. And I know that there's concerns about Jared Parker. I am concerned. But I truly believe that Sam Hartman is enough to overcome those offensive deficiencies. A Mm. veteran, elite, elite quarterback like that, he's not going to be a big-time draft prospect, but one of the better quarterbacks in college football is enough to help your team improve offensively. If you play the same way on defense and you improve slightly on offense, you are going to be a better football team in 2023. I just kind of – let's not go down this rabbit hole, but you're saying that somebody's not going to be a great NFL prospect, but they're a great college quarterback. It's music to my ears. I'm glad you came around. I do think it's crazy, though, that you you decide to use that for Notre Dame and you don't decide to use that for others – I, I, I digress okay, there. Okay, okay, okay. The problem, yeah. okay, like your argument or Notre Dame's argument, because you're not the only one saying this, okay, they were statistically the 22nd best defense in the country. I cannot dispute that, like at all. You were getting rung up at times, at times, not the whole time. You did not, you did not, you slowed South Carolina down who had a lot of people out. We're talking about them suffocating Boston College. Well, okay, but the level that they did it at was ridiculous. You're they not suffocating Ohio State. Them. You're not suffocating USC. And I guarantee you, whether you mm. like it, love it, or hate it, you are not. You think the Riley brothers aren't going to be communicating back and forth Weekend week uh, uh, when they play the both of you, they know exactly how they're gonna going to attack you. I promise you. If you think that they're not sharing notes right now on Notre Dame, you're crazy. You're crazy because they are. My point is, yes, Joe. I look at your. I look at their schedule. Okay. Here's the just the God's honest truth. You're gonna beat Navy. You're gonna beat Tennessee State. You're gonna beat NC State. You're gonna beat Central Michigan. You're going to be 4-0 going into Ohio State. That's a massive game. Two undefeated teams going into that. The problem is, Joe, I don't care if there's an orangutan at quarterback for Ohio State. With Marvin Harrison and the boys, you're not keeping up. When you, Joe. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, but here, but, yeah, okay. Joe, you're leading, returning guy on the outside. Has 361 yards and three touchdowns. You're replacing the best tight end in the country from a year ago. With with Mitchell? What, what was his name? What's his name again? Uh, not Mitchell. It Michael is Mayer? Mitchell Evans. Oh, oh, oh. You're replacing him with Mitchell Evans. Blake, the way like, that... Oh, well, we got the O-line and Andre Estime, and that's like... You, I don't give a Rudy Poo. Okay. The, first of all, the way that they played against... Ohio State last year is a strong indicator of, I feel, they're going to beat Ohio State this season. What do you think the score between Alabama and Texas is going to be very quickly this year? Those those aren't the same thing. We are not – Well, then you can't use the property. I I mean, you talked about – Why can't can't I use that, though? They're they're two similar opponents that are playing each other. Week two for Alabama, and you talked about atrocious quarterback play. You're I, wait, wait. Of I'm using that as context because that was how they prepared to play against Ohio State in Marcus Freeman's first ever game as a head coach. No, and they not played true. great defensively. That was they, his sorry, his second game. They played great defensively at Ohio State. 
Tyler Buckner played like ass, and that's why they lost that football game. C.J. Stroud was the quarterback then, and now Kyle McCord takes over, who we have no idea who he is. That is going to be his fourth ever game, and that's his first legitimate test on the schedule. I would be worried if I am Ohio State's offense, having to deal with and face off with that. Cam Hart and Benjamin Morrison deserve more recognition for being one of the better defensive back corner duos in all of college football. They deserve to be recognized as that. I'm not saying that they're going to completely take Emeka Abuka and Marvin Harrison Jr. out of the game, but if they played the way that they did last year, there is the capability for that to translate to this year because they didn't lose that many defensive bodies. But Ohio State lost a ton on offense. That, to me, is where the defining factor is here. I think that they beat Ohio State and they get to 10 wins. Oh, my God. Don't act like that's unreasonable. That's not it's, unreasonable. It's highly unreasonable. What what do they have that I that makes them so much better? Okay, you ready? The only position group that you're not better at them is offensive line and quarterback. Wait, 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 say that again. The the only thing that Notre Dame, like if you went position yes. group by position yes. group. That Notre Dame has oh, better than Ohio State. Is Notre Dame has better than Ohio State. At this have, exact moment, quarterback they have a better secondary. They have a better. I highly line. disagree with you. No, they have a. No, so, you got a better corner. You don't have a better DB unit. When Stanford Who Marshall, was hold on. Okay. When Stanford Marshall and a guy that you rip on all the time, Spencer Rattler starts lighting that ass up. Bad baby, bad baby, lighting that ass he, out he down he the field. Light them up. He didn't go over three hundred yards. In that game, Joe, did you not? Joe, he, he had, had a two picks. Up, he had a catch up packet at right tackle, a walk on guard at right tackle, a walk on center, and a true freshman left tackle. The the bowl we the bowl game. Uh, I don't. That is that is not proper evidence. Tyler because, Buckner, for example, mm -hmm. if you want to be real, look how far he progressed then. Look how far he came from Marshall to beating South Carolina. He regressed. He threw, turned the ball over three times in that game. What's worse, him throwing three picks against South Carolina and scoring five touchdowns or scoring no touchdowns, throwing two picks against Marshall? I'll wait. He didn't. I mean, both performances were horrendous. You, know that, but, you mean to tell but, me that South Carolina yeah. was not better than Marshall? They are, but that wasn't a performance. Okay. I, both of them were equally as bad. Both of them were equally as bad. But we're pointing at and we're talking about this Ohio State game that they have upcoming year, which is going to be a defining moment for their season. I don't think that they beat Clemson, and I don't think that they beat USC. I'm not going to sit here and debate you on that. But I don't really see why there is always consistent optimism for Ohio State when, frankly, over the past few because years under Ryan Day, they're a single year. That's not totally true under Ryan Day, though. They've been one of the most overrated programs since Ryan Day took over. And what's Notre been... Dame? They just started over with a new head coach. It's his second so year. did USC. They're all... I would argue, I would actually go as far as to say, and you're going to get upset when I say this, Notre Dame is probably the most underrated that it's ever been this upcoming season. I they have always, they've always been thrown that. into the top five, and they're not being put in that conversation right now. They're just Yeah, they're... because you got your cheeks clapped by Marshall again. That's why I'm saying I, that they're right. underrated. I, I'm just going to say this, and I know you're not going to like it. Okay? You ready? If you beat Ohio State in week four, you're losing to Louisville at home. You want me to tell you why? Why? There's only two teams in the country in the last 25 years that have gone on the road back-to-back -back games and won 2019 LSU, 2022 Georgia. It's the only time that it's ever happened. Joe, we're talking about a 25-year span. I think that they lose one of those games if you beat Ohio State. 